Just as the relationship Spaniards had with the indigenous people of the New World would shape the history of the Age of Discovery, so too is the history of the English colonization of North America defined by their interactions with native people. Fear of Indians had been ingrained upon the English consciousness from the outset. As discussed in the last unit, English colonials blamed the disappearance of Roanoke on its tribal neighbors, despite a lack of evidence to support their claims. Legends of human sacrifice and cannibalism had been passed down from the Spaniards uh, that came before the English. Despite sharing many of the same prejudices as the Spanish, English colonials interacted with native people differently than the Spanish did. While Encomienda allowed the Spanish to brutalize and enslave native population, it also required that they assimilate them through religion. Intermarriage, cultural exchange, and cohabitation led to the development of the Mestizos people, a new culture with blended elements of both European and native. Early English colonizers did not feel bound to assimilate the Indians, but viewed them as more, new, more or less a new world commodity. They would apply the same strategies they had used against the rebellious Irish decades before, domination and expulsion. When the scraggly settlers of Jamestown washed up on the shores of the Chesapeake in 1607, they had unknowingly entered the domain of a powerful chieftain, Powhatan, who had recently dominated a few dozen competing tribes of the region by the James River Valley. Because of his tribe's supremacy, the English colonists inaccurately dubbed all the local Indians the Powhatans. Initially, Powhatan was willing to engage in diplomacy with John Smith and the English through his daughter turned interpreter Pocahontas. But relations between the Indians and the English became tense after Smith's departure, and especially when the colonists resorted to raiding Indian villages during the starving time. The responsibility of leading Jamestown through this desperate time passed to Thomas West, the Lord Delaware, whose name uh, who was named Gover Governor for Life of Virginia in 1610. As a veteran of military campaigns to tame the Irish savages, Delaware implemented Irish tactics against the Indians, confiscating their food stores and torching their villages and fields of those tribes that would not cooperate. Violent raids and reprisals defined the relationship between Jamestown settlers and the Indians under Powhatan for the next four years, a period of history referred to as the first uh, Anglo-Powhatan Wars. A tenuous ceasefire and exchange of hostages began in 1612 after the English kidnapped Pocahontas. During this time, English settlers ventured out of the gates of Jamestown and established settlements within Powhatan's former territory. By 1614, the once mighty war chief had agreed to a peace settlement, sealed by the marriage of his daughter Pocahontas to the tobacco tycoon John Rolfe. Their marriage would be the first recorded interracial union of the English colonies. Pocahontas's peace in Virginia would not last long. When Powhatan died in 1618, his younger brother, Opechacanau, became chief in what would become notoriously known as the Indian Massacre of 1622. The new leader made overtures for peace to the English and declared his intent to be baptized. On Good Friday, Powhatan Indians came to Jamestown bearing food to trade with the colonists that were preparing for, to celebrate Easter. Once inside the fort, the natives seized, seized tools and weapons from the citizens and began to attack and would slaughter 347 men, women, and children, roughly a quarter of the English population of Virginia. 
Jamestown leaders would seek their revenge with continued assaults against tribal villages, even going so far as to murder Powhatan diplomats seeking peace by poisoning their wine. Peace between the English and the Virginia tribes was anything but peaceful in the 20 years after the first Anglo-Powhatan War. But by 1632, the English had insulated themselves by pushing their enemies off surrounding lands and walling off the James River Peninsula with a fortified six-mile palisade. But Opechacanao would make a second attempt in 1644 to reclaim his people's ancestral homes. The melee would leave 500 more colonists dead, but because of the rate of English migration, this was a much lower percentage of the population than two decades before. By this time, uh, mm -hmm. Virginia boasted a population of about 5,000 people. The Powhatan Confederacy was permanently dismantled in 1645 with the capture of Opecha Canal. The 92-year-old chief was transported back to Jamestown where he was shot in the back by his guards. After nearly 40 years of conflict with the tribes of the Chesapeake, the colonists of Virginia would shape English policy towards the native people. They would reject any attempt to assimilate them into their culture. Instead, they would banish them by sweeping them away from the white settlements. This policy would establish the foundation for the reser reservation system. This is an image of a Carolina Indian woman and child by John White. The artist was a member of the Raleigh expedition in 1585. Notice that the Indian girl carries a European doll, illustrating the mingling of cultures that had already begun. This image is of Carolina Indians. German painter Philip Gorge Frederick von Reich drew these Yuki Indians in 1730. The blankets and rifles show that trade with the English settlers had already begun to transform native culture. By the turn of the 18th century, coastal tribes like the Powhatans and the Yamsi would be considered extinct, and others like the Tuscarora were displaced far from their ancestral homelands. While warfare with the English devastated native communities, the three biggest contributors to their disappearance were th the big three Ds, disorganization, disposability, and disease. Despite having established networks of alliances, the unity of tribal confederacies like the Powhatans were jeopardized by the lucrative promises made by the English colonies to tribes that would pledge their loyalty to the crown. Furthermore, the tribes struggled to coordinate a sustained strike that would provide a crushing blow to English settlements they were attacking. Additionally, the English, unlike the Spaniards before them, had transported laborers from Europe to the New World with them. While hundreds of Native Americans were sold into slavery, their susceptibility to diseases made them frail captives. Ultimately, smallpox killed off American Indians at a greater rate than muskets ever did. Once they were able to provide for themselves, the English viewed the natives as disposable and the greatest hindrance to what they wanted most, land. Thus, defeated tribes were pushed west to the Appalachian Mountains, where they were integrated into existing tribes like the Catawba that settled in Kentucky and Tennessee, or reestablished themselves in a new environment like the Tuscarora that originated in North Carolina, but settled in the Iroquois territory of Western New York and Pennsylvania becoming this mighty Confederacy's sixth member. Settling west of the Appalachians, native peoples had the advantage of time, space, and numbers 
any Europeans that came into their territory had to respect the native way of life. Like the Spanish, English and French frontiersmen settling west of the mountains along the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River adopted native culture and lived in relative peace with native communities, at least until Europeans arrived in larger numbers. Certain distinctive features were shared by England's southern colonies. They were devoted to exploiting commercial agricultural products, most notably tobacco, rice, indigo, and sugar. Slavery was found in all plantation colonies after Georgia repealed its anti-slavery laws in 1750. But what was most prominent was the slave trade in the West Indies. Plantation agriculture developed a strong aristocracy, except in North Carolina and to some extent, Georgia. All of the plantation colonies permitted some religious tolerance, but this tolerance was limited for Catholics and non-Christians. Because of the importance of agriculture, very few cities developed in the South, making Southern society more diffuse. Soil exhaustion pushed settlers in the South further and further west towards the Appalachian Mountains and into conflict with native people. <laughs>